the City of Asheville Water Department has started installing automatic meter reading devices. Uh, we, we call them AMRs. Uh, we're gonna, we are going to install approximately 54,000, which is the number of meters we've got. Right now, we've installed uh, a little over 10,000. Project started in the, this fall, and we expect it to be completed in about three years. And what AMRs are going to do for us, uh, it's going to provide us a much better product than what we've got right now. It'll be much faster as far as getting reads. It'll be safer for meter readers. They'll be inside of vehicles while the computer is picking up the reads through a radio signal. And it'll be more accurate. The reads will be more accurate than what they are right now. We will not have estimates in the future because, uh, or should have very limited estimates in the future because we'll be able to read them even when the snow is on the ground. How we read the meters, we have an antenna on the automobile and they'll drive up and down the streets and we'll have a computer inside and, and that radio read will come from the AMRs to that antenna into our computer and we'll pick up those reads as we drive up and down those streets. It actually is going to free up some positions and, and time both and with those positions we'll put them in other places like uh, maintenance on meters and, and our water system. So it's going to add some additional personnel to help us do the things we need to do. When the plant was designed, it was designed to treat the water one particular way. And over the years, we've improved on the process. And when we've done that, then some of our pumps are oversized because they're not being used for the same purpose they were originally designed. So the pump skid behind me um, and the pumps behind that were originally designed to push water into Asheville. So the original pumps could put out 3,500 gallons a minute, which was way more than we needed now because those pumps were just pumping to Black Mountain. So when our money became available and we had this as a project we wanted to do, we uh, were able to put in a request for those funds and they'll pay for half of what the cost was. So it allowed us, rather than having 12, 10, 12 years of payback, it'll probably be five or six. Um, also because the economy was doing poorly, we actually saved a lot of money just by going out for a bit at that point. I want to say it was about $100,000 less than what we originally thought it was going to be. The other pump skid that we had designed was one for our high surface pump. Originally that pump was put in, it was to give the, the plant facility high surface water, but also to push water up to the filters to help clean the filters. Well, back in 92, 94, we upgraded the filters and we went to an air blower system, which didn't require pumped water. So we sort of have the best of both worlds. We still have the old reliable uh, pumps for fire protection, but we're using what we normally need every day, you know, almost 100% of the time are the smaller, more efficient pumps. So that's been really exciting. And you can already see, you know, on the energy bills, some changes. Um, for instance, in the month of October, we used, I think it was about 95,000 kilowatts here at the plant. And comparing that to the fall before where we used about 190,000, I mean, there's a huge difference in our power consumption. Um, we feel like right now, between September and the beginning of January, we've seen about a $20,000 cost savings. So if you kind of play that forward, that could be as much as 60,000 for the year, which would be really great. So this is why I'm really excited about these, that they're quiet and they seem to work very well. We've run them through their paces. We haven't had a problem. We have backup generators, so there's no time that the pump should be working. And I'm just thrilled. <laughs> For the most recent quarter, we've been able to install um, quite a few linear feet of new sidewalk, um, particularly along the section of Patton Avenue from Regent Park to Leicester Highway, um, and then as well along Tunnel Road in the East Asheville area. The Patton Avenue project, uh, of course, was high needed linkage because it's on a very high volume street. 
Uh, that project did have funding from DOT and it, the, the project cost was extensively more and so that project was contracted out and the private sector com has, is in the process of finalizing that work for us. It did include some significant retaining walls um, and it, it included working within the high volume area just because it was difficult to work without closing off the lane of traffic. Uh, in contrast, the Tunnel Road Project, we were able to use in-house crews. Um, we were able to um, have a more flexibility in the way that we operated those crews and our ability to process and include different items within that, such as the top of stop or adding in additional handicap ramps because of that flexibility. We do have some state laws that regulate our limitations on being able to use in-house crews. But that was a project that fortunately we were able to do that and we were able to save a significant amount of money by using in-house crews to do that. From a transportation perspective, we're excited to see our community supportive of sidewalks. Not only is it a way for people to get back and forth without polluting the environment, but it's also great for our health. Uh, we're starting to see funding become more funding become available and more attention being given to that for those reasons. One of the things that we're trying to concentrate on is trying to make our infrastructure as ADA compliant as we can. Uh, so in Nashville that's a difficult thing. We can't always achieve that but we want to do get as close to 100 percent as we can so that's what we do. We work closely with the designers, we work closely with the crews as they are constructing and then once a project's finished or in the process of being finished we go back and we take a walk through just to see if there's any way that we could improve it for the next one and then we work closely with the crews to make sure they understand what we need and a good example of one that we just completed is the top of stop improvement that we did on Beverly Road. Uh, before we went out there, the top of stop was there. It functioned, but it was sitting on grass and there was no way to really get to it without walking on grass and or mud if it was raining. So now we have a sidewalk connection that connects that top of stop. This top of stop is ADA compliant and someone can even cross the street, cross Tunnel Road with pedestrian signals and crosswalks and that was thanks to the DOT. Uh, so that we're really making a connection and, and the sidewalk now extends all the way to the library and the community center. Our transportation department does a really good job in selecting um, which existing top of stop needs to be converted over to, to be ADA compliant. And, and the, the fact that we're already there doing sidewalk improvements, um, ADA uh, wheelchair ramp improvements into the curb lines, um, a lot of times it just makes a lot of sense just to go ahead and, and repair and upgrade the top of stops while we're there to make them ADA compliant also. Nuisance Court started back in uh, September 2009 and we have a session once per month at the county uh, courthouse. The participants, they are given uh, community service hours which we will utilize in our public works department. And uh, what they do is they clean graffiti um, off of various public infrastructure, uh, they clean sidewalks. It's really giving back to the community. But it's working very, very well. Over the uh, since inception, we've had about uh, thirty thousand dollars in uh, in work-related production. So it's a huge help and saves the city a lot of money. This past quarter, uh, we removed seventeen hundred tags, and uh, we cleaned about five miles of sidewalks. And that includes picking up litter. Depending on the on the on the weather conditions, like for example, winter, there's not a lot of uh, uh, grass growing up between. Crack, so it'll get more intense in the summertime. And we've had some very positive comments from, from folks from downtown. That they do notice a difference. Um, the participants work with us very well. They're very cooperative. They work hard and, and we make sure that they continue doing that. Hopefully we're giving something back to them about uh, how, how to work.
We've had some uh, great success with crying, uh, a lot of uh, downtrending that has occurred uh, in the past uh, few years. Uh, last year, when we got our crime statistics, we had a 25% reduction in violent crime in the city of Asheville and a 13% reduction in property crime. Uh, this year, 2010, ending 2010, actually had a crime rate pretty much of what we, we had before. It stayed steady, so that's a good sign knowing how much crime dropped the previous year. Our gang suppression unit has been uh, very effective uh, and, and done a lot of uh, outreach and intelligence gathering as well. One of the things they have done is conducted a lot of education for families through our uh, gang resistance education training. It's called GREAT and uh, that's to teach families how to keep their children away from gang activity and steer clear of that. They've also, again, through their intelligence gathering, uh, also played a significant role in some of the enforcement of, of gang activity, violations of law associated with gang members. We provide a diversified program offerings through our community centers. Through those community centers, we're able to impact the local citizens and provide a quality program um, for youth to keep them out of trouble during the after school hours. The direct programs, there are about seven direct programs, after school programs at different sites um, that we offer. Uh, through that program we serve about 1,100 kids um, and it costs about $515 per kid. Um, and if you equate that over the per capita with having 76,000 residents in Asheville, it comes out to about $7 um, and some change per citizen. Through these economic times uh, and the budget challenges, we are glad that we were able to preserve that um, with some of the budget issues we've had over the past few years. Um, one of our main priorities is to still provide that at-risk youth programming because we see that as a core service.